Welcome to your English 7 concept video. This video takes the place of your class lecture, saving class time for valuable discussion. Treat this video as you would a class lecture. Pay attention carefully and take notes. If you wish, pause the video or rewind it to understand something you missed. Bring questions to class. Okay? Let's go. Today, we're discussing the short fiction concept of character. Character is a vitally important aspect of any story. In fact, it may be the most important aspect of any story. Think about it. Every story ever written or told is about us. It's about people. You may argue saying that, well, I've read and seen and listened to stories about fish, or about trees, or about mythical creatures. And while that is the case, every one of those has stood in for us. A story about a fish would probably depict a fish acting like us. This is the concept of character, and it is central to understanding any story. But let's get to the definition. A character is a literary representation of a person composed of behavioral traits and motivations. That's important to understand because characters are not always human. As I mentioned before, you may have seen a story like Finding Nemo, in which your characters are primarily animals, non-human creatures. However, those representations are essentially people that act and think as we would. That means that they stand in for people as characters. And each one of them contains behavioral traits, personality traits, emotional traits tendencies in their behavior, and they want things. They have motivations. Every character is a person that behaves in a certain way and wants a certain thing. Let's understand some principles associated with this definition. Characters are not always human, as I've already mentioned. And characters always demonstrate both traits and motivations. Every time you meet a character in a piece of literature, you can understand their traits, and you can determine what they want. Those traits may be simple, those motivations may be simple, but they are always both present. Let's talk about the way that authors reveal character traits in literature. Essentially, they can reveal character traits in two main ways. The first is called direct characterization, and this is where the author tells the reader the character's traits in plain language. So, if I introduced a character into a story and I wanted to tell the reader that that character is generous, I might state directly, the character is generous. Let's call the character Susie. Susie was a generous person. That line from a story is direct characterization. The author is directly telling you what the character's trait is. That's not very interesting, though, and most good authors avoid direct characterization as a primary way of building their characters. They would focus instead on indirect characterization. This is where the author reveals the character traits through other means, like how they act. Let's take Susie again, for example. Let's say that I, as an author, want to express that Susie is generous. I could say Susie is generous, or I could show Susie acting in a generous way. I could depict Susie giving money to charity. I could show her helping somebody else, giving of her time. I could show her sacrificing her own happiness for somebody else's happiness. In that way, I have shown her to be generous, but I do not need to use the word generous to impress upon the reader that that is her character trait. So authors can reveal character traits in these two different ways, directly and indirectly. And while direct characterization is easier to spot, indirect characterization is more common and more rewarding in a story. Let's take a look at some examples. Let's say that you have a character that is said by the author to love every person he encounters, wanting to help them however he can with a boundless charity. What type of characterization is this? This is direct characterization. This is where the author tells you directly of the capacity to love and the charitable nature of the character. This comes out in direct language, so the reader can understand it very clearly. Unfortunately, it is not as interesting in terms of writing. 
Let's say we have another character, and this character says to his friend, Obviously you have failed to perceive the meretricious nature of the program. What character trait is being developed? Well, this is indirect characterization, of course, because the author is not coming out and telling you what the character is like. The author is showing you the character's behavior, and you, as a reader, must infer what the character is. From this information, you might infer that the character is well-educated because they are using sophisticated language. Or you may determine that the character is cruel if you think that this is a cruel statement. Of course, understanding this statement in the context of the overall story is helpful for indirect characterization, but you can start to make inferences on as little evidence as this one line. Let's see another example. The character never shows up to an appointment on time. Of course, again, this is indirect characterization. And what might you infer from it? You may infer that the character is lazy. You may infer that the character is irresponsible or disrespectful. Is that necessarily the case? No. It could be that the character is actually helping other people, and that's why he or she shows up late to an appointment every single time. It could be that this failure to show up on time shows a generous nature because that person is caring for others. We don't necessarily know for certain we would need more information, but such is the nature of inference. When you're looking at information about a character, you infer. That means you make an educated guess based on the evidence about what the character is. And that's the nature of indirect characterization. Let's say your character slouches whenever sitting with a group at a business meeting. Again, this is indirect characterization, and you may not quite know why the character is doing this, but you can make some guesses. Once again, the character could be disrespectful. The character could be lazy or irresponsible. Or the character could be anxious, self-conscious. There are any number of conclusions to be made from this evidence. More information may be required, and when you are using indirect characterization to determine a character, you may need that more information. Information will come to you in a variety of ways and in a variety of strengths. The indirect characterization that you will use to make inferences could be clear or not. Let's take an example from some of our own literature. Let's look at the flight of Icarus. We have two characters, Icarus and Daedalus. Icarus the son, Daedalus the father. What traits do these characters demonstrate? What behavioral traits do they have? Well, let's take a look at some of the evidence from the text. Let's look at Daedalus first. Daedalus was an ingenious artist and was not discouraged by his failures. Obviously, that is direct characterization. The author is coming right out and telling you about the traits. But what are the traits? Well, the trait could be brilliance, or the trait could be persistence, or both. This is fairly obvious from the direct characterization. Something important to understand is that when you are determining a trait for a character, you should use single words that describe those character traits. Brilliance or persistence. Those are nouns, describing a quality that Daedalus has. You could make them adjectives. Daedalus is brilliant, or Daedalus is persistent. However you do it, single words that accurately describe traits are necessary to writing and talking about characterization properly. Let's continue with Icarus. We might read about Icarus finding out that he played happily, or played about happily on the beach while his father watched. This would show us childishness or playfulness. Icarus is revealed by his behavior on the beach and that revelation is indirect we infer what Icarus is like from the information given to us in the text, but we don't directly know. Our guess is a pretty good one, though, and further information from the flight of Icarus will show us that we are correct. Something vitally important in understanding how to deal with character is the role of evidence. You'll notice that we used evidence from the text for both Daedalus and Icarus to determine what the character traits were. Whether we were looking at direct or indirect characterization, we were always proceeding from the text. And when you are discussing characterization in writing or verbally, 
you must always make references to page numbers, quotations, text information. Supporting character traits with evidence from the text is essential. You must always use text evidence to support the character traits. So in review, characters are those people in the story, the stand-ins for us, whether they are human or not. They demonstrate traits and motivations. And you can look at motivation if you're considering conflict. Look at that video for a discussion of motivation. But the traits can be summarized in single words, and they are determined through direct and indirect means. Supporting those character traits with evidence in discussion is essential to understanding character and expressing that character to somebody else. If you continue to read your stories, look at events and statements, and infer what that says about the character, you will understand the people that you're reading about.